Hello everyone, it's Marcus from Blue Donut Games and uh, I wanted to take you through some of the techniques uh, uh, that I use for making all the graphics for Horror in the Library. Um, so I'm going to start with things like the logo, uh, the some of the text, uh, so all the social media posts, uh, I do those myself and uh, I did all the artwork for all the box, all the characters, uh, everything all, all done by hand uh, using uh, uh, comic book techniques, drawing. Uh, so I thought uh, you guys might be interested in how I do some of those bits and pieces. Uh, I'm going to start off with some ideas but I'm always uh, up for suggestions. Um, probably stop doing them <laughs> but uh, uh, whatever uh, I'm gonna make a start and if people like these little vids uh, that's great um, so what am I gonna do first well I thought I would take you through some of the graphics and I'd start uh, actually with the, the logo so if I just flip over here so uh, I've got here uh, something uh, we're working on at the moment so uh, we are actually working on a, a VR game. Uh, we, we have a VR business, so uh, it seemed to make sense to get the two businesses to talk to each other and actually work on uh, creating uh, a multiplayer VR game. But I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about how I do all the, the artwork. So I wanted to, to uh, look at the Horror in the Library logo for a start. So I'm actually gonna take that and uh, Put it here now the first thing I should say is that the software that I'm using I use I do use a wide variety of applications um, and if you're if you're not aware of this particular application I do recommend you you take a look at it it's called affinity designer and uh, it's uh, uh, an application I use every day. Uh, we have Adobe Illustrator. I used to be a freelance Adobe Illustrator operator many, many, many years ago. Uh, but I really like this application. It works well. I know where uh, the company called Canva have bought it uh, and they're going to look after it. Uh, but the, uh, the the team at Affinity, big uh, shout out to you uh, people because you've done an amazing job with this software. You can get it for the Mac, you can get it for the PC, you can also get a tablet version as well, which is very, very good. And I've, I've used that. Uh, I use that tablet version actually for doing the artwork for the uh, expansion cards uh, for the apparatus, actually, for drawing uh, the illustrations on that. So it's really good. Right. OK, so this is the Horror in the li Library logo. And there's there's been a few iterations of this, as some of you have supported us over the years and it's been I think about five years take to get to where we are with today's uh, product which is fantastic um, so we've you've made quite a few changes um, but so I wanted to talk about uh, really the, the design of it first and, and why uh, I, I wanted it to be this way and in some ways what would be nice to do as well is to have the background because I think the background and I will talk about the background as well um, so I'm going to take the background and I'm going to come back over to here I'm going to paste it on top there and I'm going to send it to the back so there we go there's the there's the logo there so I wanted to, obviously I wanted to do a logo that I felt was quite Victorian uh, but exciting at the same way uh, at the same time I should say and uh, I wanted something that would express obviously a library and something spooky and creepy and uh, yes there's a bit of Cthulhu in there come on you can't say there isn't uh, so yeah so uh, the idea was I really wanted to, to get the idea of the horror in there so I wanted the the, the horror to, to uh, uh, sizzle at the top um, but bring your eye with the in the and these 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 sharp little uh, dealies here, and then down into the bookcase. So originally, this bookcase here ha had books uh, behind there with the word library. But then I realised, well, you've got the word library, and it kind of I like the ambiguity as well of the idea that that could be a, a doorway, a, a bookshelf something mysterious going on and obviously you've got these things originally the logo just had the tentacles uh, and we thought uh, well 
it, it, we didn't, didn't want it to be too overtly uh, Cthulhu. So I took the tentacles off, and then I just had these these funny uh, insectoid-like antenna. But it didn't feel right. Um, so then I just put to both of them on to see how that would look, and that really worked. I thought that worked really well. So um, let's start dissecting this logo. I mean, I've got as well, I mean, this bit here. <laughs> uh, yeah, Mr. Pullen. <laughs> so that's uh, uh, Marcus and my middle name are. And uh, uh, I'll let you try and work out what that could be. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, it, it seemed the right thing just to balance it off. And uh, after a while, everybody said, you know, why don't you put your name on it? Because so, I didn't have the name on it. So, but it's, that's not the important bit. It's it's the it's the game itself that's the important bit. Okay, so I'm going to start dismantling things. I'm going to come over to the layers, and I'm just going to turn that off. Um, one of the funny things uh, I think is uh, being a, uh, having been a, a professional art worker for, for many years, uh, working with uh, oh, uh, working with uh, designers, uh, other designers. I'm a graphic designer by trade. Um, many years ago. Uh, and working with other designers is sometimes uh, they will make amazing artwork, uh, and uh, you you then get the artwork as a as a as a technical illustrator operator, uh, and then you start to take it apart. And you see what a bloody mess it is, <laughs> um, and you can't possibly use that for print. And there's a the thing. So obviously, uh, I've I've done a lot of work with digital. I do a lot of work with print. So I think it would be nice at some stage to talk about how we uh, how I have to consider print and digital and how uh, different colours work. Um, so that was a challenge as well, is to make sure that uh, in digital uh, it works uh, really well, uh, but then having to make make sure that the colours work fine in print. Now, if you don't know, uh, there are two different types of colour uh, when it comes to uh, uh, the printing that we use. Um, in fact, there's, 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 there's probably should say three. There's the uh, RGB, so the red, green and blue. And then the, uh, the print is CMYK, because that's cyan, magenta, yellow and black. And uh, the palettes between the two uh, are uh, they, they can look very different uh, in print and on screen, and obviously then you've got uh, what are called spot colours, which uh, uh, you, you will find as the Pantone colours. They're specific uh, uh, industry recognised colour uh, uh, chits or numbers, Pantone reference numbers. Um, but we don't use. Uh, there's somebody telling me about about print. <laughs> yep. Uh, we don't uh, we don't use uh, I, I don't use uh, 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 panto numbers. Um, I tend to take the uh, the balance between the RGB and the CMYK, and I I'm quite flexible, but I, I just want it to look good. Um, I know if I worked in uh, a, a big company, uh, I'd have to follow the, the rules and would need a calibrated monitor and all of that stuff. At the end of the day, we just want it to look good and uh, so that it's recognisable. And I've been very, very lucky that the printers that I work with are super, absolutely super. They work so hard to, to uh, look at what I've got on screen, and match it as closely as they can do to print. So a big thank you to uh, uh, people I've uh, worked with over the years on the pr printing. We've got Roller Banners UK who uh, do all our pull-up banners and uh, it's always a treat to work with them because they just come out absolutely super uh, for the shows and we've worked with uh, other Excel displays for doing our, our backdrops. And uh, um, I, I should also say a massive thank you to uh, uh, long pack uh, who have done the latest edition the fourth edition of horror in the library um, and they've made that absolutely super so right enough enough of talking about colors and, and giving uh, my uh, uh, suppliers a uh, free free call out uh, I want to start taking this apart but I was saying about how uh, um, you know, the, the logo looks from a technical aspect now Actually, there's a few funny things about this logo, which uh, I like, but some people might get annoyed about. 
Now, one of those things is how things uh, uh, line up, and also uh, the logo is actually not symmetrical, and that's deliberate. So if I just take a rule out here and uh, bring that here, you can see the nodes on the bounding box here. So I'm just going to just quickly just line them up there and line them up over here. There we go. So as you can see, the, the, the bounding area of the artwork here, the, the uh, crosshairs don't actually line up in the centre. Um, so it's in the centre of the, the kind of artwork area, but not the centre of the logo. So if I move that to the middle there, uh, and move that up to the top. Oh, don't believe it. Right. So if I just uh, move that over to there, and then I would line that up. So the the kind of the the creative centre of the logo is actually completely offset and uh, you'll also note that uh, the the balance of the uh, tentacles is different and uh, the reason I did that is because I wanted to get some tension so the longer that you look at the logo the more it looks slightly odd and that's kind of reflecting in the game that the, the, the longer that you were uh, you stare into the library the crazier you become <laughs> So <laughs> that's my excuse. Uh, but yeah, no, that's that's. I could have easily just mirrored uh, the tentacles, but I feel that a sense of a uh, sense of writhingness and unruliness was called uh, for this this kind of logo. So um, uh, it does obviously it makes it a, a challenge sometimes to creatively balance everything up when you've got other uh, uh, items in your composition. But uh, um, I'm a fan of using the eye over the ruler when it comes to things like that. And it's also a, a shout out to, to some of those, you know, more craft, arts and crafts people, in the Victorian age, where uh, mechanical perfection wasn't really, uh, 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 you know, the thing they were seeking. They wanted the creative purity to... To, to sing out and I'm thinking about people like William Morris who designed lots and lots of wallpaper and the arts and crafts movements and they wanted a more craftsman-like uh, design of things even though they used uh, as I said William Morris did wallpaper so there was lots of uh, <coughs> you know printing technology used in there but uh, the designs were trying to call back to a, uh, a simpler time and so I was kind of trying to do the same thing I suppose uh, rather arrogant of me, I know, uh, but there we go. So um, I'm going to switch to kind of like this wireframe mode, and that's quite interesting then, because you can see how things are structured, and some of the things might be a su surprise. And I will be honest, uh, I, I did an awful lot of tidying up uh, to get the logo in, uh, to this stage. There were, uh, let's say, there were a few few oddities of when I first made this and uh, then had to get it over to the printers and uh, we got strange results uh, so I had to go back to the artwork and, and tidy that up so uh, uh, you know I, I suppose that's uh, that's karma for all the years where I had to work with uh, other designers and moan about all their artwork <laughs> uh, yeah so there we go so think about that if you're designing your logo for your game and you want to get it right then uh, uh, get it right in the artwork. There's a there's an old adage as well about uh, um, 3D, which I think applies to any kind of uh, form of work, is that if you don't get something right when you start off and you build on the error, it will just get worse. Uh, and, and I think really that's that's probably true to a, to a lesser degree, but certainly true in when you're doing 2D work. Yeah. Right, okay, so let's uh, start taking this apart and, and see uh, how, from a technical point of view, how I put this together. So I'm just going to go into, if you can see over here, I've got these different layers and there are, uh, there are quite a few different uh, bits and pieces that make up the uh, the logo, uh, as you can imagine. Um, really uh, really good organized people will uh, put these in colored groups and uh, uh, give them very sensible names but when you're designing something uh, and I and I drew it uh, and I did a mixture of scanning drawing and, and uh, but I'm a I, I do like actually designing 
uh, within the tool I've got and that's one of the great things I think about Affinity is uh, I don't feel I'm having to make design decisions around the software, the software has provided me with the ability to make design decisions around my design. So I'm not afraid to admit that you know I sit in, in Affinity sometimes and work from an idea and I think it's, it's, this is uh, quite a good example of how that can work. Right, so let's let's start having a look at the words. Obviously, that's that's pretty important. So I'm just going to come out of here, and you can see it now when I switch between the two modes. And I know there's a there's a way of uh, going between the two, so you can split the screen. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to flick flick this button here. So as you can see, uh, there's there's a there's a range of effects on this. Um, what I also do is. Uh, uh, I will often um, uh, convert the text to outlines. Now, when I'm sending artwork to a printer, I will always do that, uh, just in case they don't have the type font, uh, typeface or font, as some people call it. Now, a word about typefaces, um, and this is really important, is when you're making uh, any commercial product, you must make sure you've bought the license to the typeface. Now uh, I've got, uh, I've bought uh, typefaces, and I also uh, I do uh, recommend having an Adobe Cloud subscription uh, because that gives you access to the cloud fonts, which uh, they're amazing, absolutely amazing. But they don't always give you the, exactly the right typeface. So there are lots of lots of uh, typefaces uh, from other other makers. Uh, Monotype obviously is a very very well known one. But there are smaller creators as well that make typefaces and it is nice to support them as well by, by buying uh, their typefaces. Um, uh, just a word about using uh, free typeface uh, websites. So they're great for coming up with concepts but always read the text file that comes with a typeface because there will be a license and some typefaces are open source, completely free to use. Like Google has many of those that are completely free to use. But the free font websites, be warned that sometimes you can download a font and it will say this is only for personal use. And if you then use it for commercial use, that could be a problem. So always check uh, the, the licensing around your, your typefaces or any, any third party art for that matter or any sounds, music. Those people you know, work to create those things and they need to be paid. So just bear that in mind when you're creating your own artwork for your own product that you want people to pay you for. Okay, so that's uh, about the typeface. You can see here actually this uh, typeface is still still live. Um, I'm not going to change it, but I'm quite happy with that being a live typeface. So if I, if I just type uh, some gobbledygook in there, you can see, oh, there's some strange things going on. So if we uh, unpack this, you'll see actually over here, so if I just move this over, you'll see that this is actually a group. So there's three layers on here. So let's uh, turn things off and see what's what's going on. Wait, I've just turned off the everything. Right. So if I look at the uh, uh, the, the horror here without the background, so that's why I have the uh, the the, the uh, text behind because I wanted to use uh, this. To give us uh, more strength on, on the on the horror, so if I if I put that back on, you'll see that I overlay it. What does that actually give me? Now you could argue I could use I've used an effects here. Now Affinity has loads and loads of different effects, and if I click on the FX here, you'll see I've got <coughs> an outline effect here. Uh, and oh yeah, I'm doing it on the wrong one. You can't see that there. So if I just click on that one and click on that, you can see I've got the outline, and it's using uh, it's using the uh, the black. Okay. Uh, now I could have uh, not used that and used then the uh, outline here. Uh, quite uh, in, a, in, a, in a similar way. Now the thing is, what you've got to be aware, as you can see, if I use this particular uh, outline, which is using the vector line, that does actually give me the ability to ch quickly change the colour from here, whereas the uh, effects 
doesn't, I have to uh, do it from a different colour wheel. So, uh, uh, well, I at the time thought I'd, oh, I'll just use the outline, and I've uh, stuck with that. But um, if I um, come over to here, you can see that the 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 the, uh, the black outline is encroaching into the green text. Um, I can change that by changing where the line actually sits uh, on the on the uh, um, where its baseline is sitting. So if I I think if I go into outline mode, you probably won't see the difference. If I switch between these, no, you don't. So if I come back to here, however, you will see I will get a different effect depending on where I put the line. So you could argue that this would have been a, a simpler way of, of doing it, and that's absolutely fine. And that's one of the nice things about affinity or just generally working is you can sometimes uh, there's a there's 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 sometimes uh, more than one way to solve a problem, but each method may have a knock-on effect. So, and it's only really practice uh, and experience uh, that will teach you. And I would say there's probably lots of online courses. I've obviously uh, over over the years taught myself how to to use this, and I've employed practices of when I've used uh, freehand, which you probably you lot out there probably don't know freehand, but uh, that was oldest freehand. That's what I started out with, and I I was trained on, on that, and I learned Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator. I, Known that for many many years um, and I taught myself how to use affinity now the great thing is these days there are lots and lots of people out there who can uh, teach you how to do lots of different techniques so you find out which one works and then when you're in a production what we call a production pipeline so the different stages of when you create something is then when you find out which technique works better or not because it might have a knock-on effect so, okay, so that's, uh, gosh, I've talked so much just about outlining text. Who'd have thought it? Uh, so, uh, how did I get the uh, the gradient in there? So this is becoming, this is interesting, this is becoming uh, maybe a, a useful how-to uh, on Affinity Designer. Great, if it is, that's great. But um, I'm really just kind of giving people an insight of how I think about uh, designing and uh, how I... Uh, use the software. So um, there is a, a, a gradient tool, as you'd imagine. I like using the shortcuts on the keyboard, so I don't have to keep moving everywhere. So I just press on G, and you can see that the gradient tool gives me this this uh, funny line, and that I can then move things. I've done it again. Sorry, there we go. That's better. Uh, and that I can move things, so I can play around with the the height. So we've got two colours. I've got my light colour and I've got my <laughs> dark colour. So uh, for the colour theorists out there, there's, there's uh, different uh, wheels that you can use to do this. I am quite happy with the uh, pretty uh, colour wheel. And I, I, the way I, cho I choose my colours is what I like, uh, rather than using any uh, you know hard tech colour theory. Uh, but uh, Maybe I should do, maybe I shouldn't. Um, uh, I, I tend to use what my, my brain likes um, and I th what I think looks pretty. So, um, but feel free to use whatever method you want. Now, uh, you'll see that I can, I can change. Uh, it's, it's almost then starts to look like I'm lighting something, uh, which is the whole point of uh, giving it the shade to try and get some atmosphere here. Uh, the great thing as well about this gradient tool is uh, it's very easy to add uh, different colours, different shades, so I can click a node is created and then I can just go over to the colour wheel and uh, I can add uh, some, some different hues, different tones, light, uh, add in some different little, different there, you can see. And, and then you can, the, the ramping, so the, the change from one colour to the other, I can uh, I can zoom in and I can change that uh, as I, as I like. So that's how I get the the, the gradient there. So uh, okay, so let's uh, have a look at this this piece of text. I've got here the 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 horror. We've talked about the uh, gradient color, uh, but I've also got a gradient color on the 
uh, outline as well. So the outline, you can see I can, oh, what's going on here? How come I've got, what? So this line isn't being used for the, the green outline. I'm using, yes, outline on the uh, effect. And you can see, actually, I am using a solid colour. So uh, there is no gradient uh, on the on the uh, outline at all. It's actually just solid. Uh, if I wanted to add, I could uh, create a, a, a contour, or I could uh, create a gradient if I if I wanted to, like that. Okay. It's not, it's solid. Like that. So if I turn the effect off, there we go. We can see, if I zoom in though, there is a very fine line. So I use the lines uh, to create different, different shades and different effects to build up the, the, uh, the, the detail to give the the logo a sense of fineness and you can see it particularly with the library here and it and it really stands out in the digital that that fine outline line with the gradient really helps it to 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 pop but i also wanted to give uh depth so horror in the horror and library horror slightly stands forward visually in terms of the library especially in the print so draw in go horror oh in the library or horror in the maybe something else who knows right so that's the horror bit the library bit the in there is pretty pretty straightforward and uh so there's not really a lot to say about that it's got the outline uh, right now, these th these little funny things here—they look quite uh, quite simple. So let's go and have a look at one of these things. There, there's there's not too much to them. Uh, more about technique than anything. Now you're probably wondering why have I got a big outline on there? Well, that was to help build the shape of this. Without the outlines, there's lots of sharp, jaggedy bits, and I didn't want that and gaps. So I used outline to to build up the black infill. Um, so if we take that off, what are we left with? So we're we're left with a line that has uh, an outline on it. And if I take that away, there's nothing. So what's what's uh, what's occurring there? So you can see that the line is uh, it grows in one end. So it's actually it's actually using the pen tool. So the pen tool over here. So I created it from there to there. Hold on a moment. How come I what? Why is that? Okay. So they're both the exactly the same lines and those of you out there who use these drawing programs are all going to be saying oh it's the thickness you idiot of course it's the thickness and that's a great thing uh, about uh, illustrator and affinity uh, and uh, i also use an, another program uh, which i'll show another day called clip studio which is fantastic for drawing comics and i use clip studio to draw all the characters so uh, I'll take you through that another day. Right, so so yes, thickness. So how do we get this thickness? Well, they uh, have, uh, the clever chaps here have come up with this pressure thing. So we have a pressure diagram. And if I uh, uh, change the slant, you can see I can then uh, change the thickness here. Or I can change it the other way. I can then also grab uh, and create a node here. Now this is fabulous because it means then I can create uh, all kinds of shapes uh, from from a, a line. So maybe you know a gear or something from a machine, and then I can then uh, adjust its bend very simply like that. 
uh, th th there's there's lots I can talk about lines, uh, and um, uh, so to to how did I get the, this this curve? So if I go back to my curve chart, you can save these by the way as as profiles, and I know I should do, but yeah, <laughs> I haven't. Uh, so I I will do one like this. And you can see that's that's how it works. And of course, uh, it, uh, I can change the end cap. And you see, as I change the end cap on the line, it gives me a different point. So I know that's that node here is the the end, like that. And then I can uh, change how uh, the outlines are aligned uh, to the node. Through here, you can't see that here because it's just an end, end node. Uh, so that's how I created these little things and uh, if we then go and have a look at the box how, how did I make that so the box as you can see is uh, oh yes and I should have pointed out I, I made an, another these are actually made up of two so I could get the I just wanted a little line on the inside so uh, there, there's actually uh, uh, two two objects that make these these things work okay so let's go and grab uh, have, a, have a look at this so the the box underneath you can see it's a it's a funny old shape um, and that is because of uh, I wanted to block out where the let letters were so if we go back to this logo here you can see I wanted I wanted something to cover the Y and uh, I, I wanted to fill in the gaps that were being created here so uh, that's why this is a funny shape and if I just take that away you'll see all, all it is is just that that funny shape there and it's the line here that makes it look like it's disappearing into the black so a very simple technique so the line itself if we have a look at this this box it is purely that it has uh, a, uh, a line on it like that and then a gradient very very simple and in fact you can see it's only it's only part uh, and I think that's because I I cropped it So nice and easy to, to make, and it gives uh, such a good effect when it's when it's added. So that's how I made the box. How did I make all the other bits and pieces? Okay, so let's move that out of the way. That's this was pretty straightforward. It's just a, a typeface I use called Rage Italic, which is really nice. Love it. Uh, very easy to use. Uh, it's it's well for the for the you know being interested in type. Um, I think it's a really well made typeface. The kerning, the spacing between the letters is really good, and of course you can adjust all of that. So I won't I won't bore people with a typography lesson. I'm sure there's loads of other people that would love to be able to do that. <laughs> uh, right. Okay. So let's move this box out the way. Okay. And then we're we're left with this uh, interesting writhing mass of, of tentacles. So the tentacles uh, were actually quite difficult, well they were for me, to kind of think how am I going to get tentacles in here uh, and make it, because I wanted it to feel, it's a logo, it's very graphical, I didn't want to go to, to be honest with you, I didn't want to go to all the bother of making a 3D pipe pee tentacle and, or try and try and do anything like that. So what's the quickest way of doing one of these things? So I'll just take it apart and you'll see, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a line, that's all it is. And it's a line, which is great, because it meant that I could, once I've done one, I could then play around. And if I just zoom in on that, you could see what I was doing there. So it's wonderful because you can, you can get it to play, you know, an experiment as you go, 
to see oh what does what, what will that do and you can see it, it, its structure uh, how I've put it together now you may find that sometimes this belongs in a group and the thing is that you can give groups outlines as well so uh, just be careful because you might forget oh where did I put that so this has got uh, a glow on it as well and that is because further up the chain uh, there there are it's got outlines and you'll find probably up at the top uh, yeah it's got an outer glow I'll turn that off you see it all disappears and then uh, lower down the chain uh, there is a, uh, a an outline on there so you might find that uh, it's not necessarily uh, just close, close that again out of the way that it's not necessarily uh, a light uh, an effect might not actually be on your your object now that's probably sloppy on my part uh, but actually uh, uh, you might find it works to your advantage uh, so I'm not afraid to, 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 to try different things and if it works I'll leave it um, but you've got to be careful because again when you're going into print it may cause a problem when you uh, uh, have to export it uh, for, for them to be able to use so just just bear that in mind some of the effects in affinity uh, may drop out and you may find that uh, when you drop over to CMYK which I'll, I'll, I'll just I'll, I'll do a little bit about that uh, in a moment okay so we've worked out how, how, how we can do that and if I just click on the uh, the lines profile there's the profile for adjusting you see I can again make, make it a bit thinner and we can adjust it. I was going to say, uh, if you've got a graphics ta t tablet, then it's it's super for using pressure with your pen, and you can draw these things very quickly, and you'll get the the pressure automatically if you set that up to work uh, with the pen, and it does. And I have oh, I've got another monitor which is actually a graphics ta tablet. Uh, obviously, there's there's lots and lots of different types. Wacom, X Pen. I use an X Pen myself, um, but there's lots of others. So. Oh, which is fantastic um, and they're quite affordable now uh, but this uh, sometimes uh, if you don't have a graphics tablet or you really don't get on with them um, this is a great uh, alternative but I would say as well it's worth working with this because you've got that minute control that a pen won't actually give you so once you've drawn the line that's great you can then come in behind and then work on it so you're absolutely spot on happy with what you've created okay so that's the the tentacle and, th and these as you I think you figured out by now uh, the same it's the same deal with these ones uh, how these work and then we've got the suckers uh, so it took me a few goes to get the suckers right for some reason uh, uh, I just wasn't happy with them until I realised what I what I needed was I needed the outline of the sucker, but I thought, oh, I don't want to go and have to draw that in there and fiddle around. So, so I came up with these things. So you can see this is why it's quite he helpful that the group, this object itself, if I cut it out and then paste it somewhere else, uh, out of the drawing, actually, if I just, I don't know, put it, if I put it there there we go you'll see that it doesn't actually have that outline and that is because uh, it's in a group that does have that outline uh, on it there you go so that's just why it's it's sometimes it's beneficial not to put the outline onto the object but to put it on the group so that you can do this kind of thing and as you can see these as I move these around uh, I can easily rotate them until I'm happy there we go. So there. I'll come back. Grab this this one here. Wherever he's gone. Where is he? Aha. Yes. So that's another thing just to be aware of your grouping structure that uh, objects um, you can set preferences to snap to objects uh, but uh, yeah you might need to just be aware of where where things are grouped and how you access them um, uh, to, if you need to keep moving things around uh, you can easily find an object in its lab just by going control K 
and it will take you to uh, that item. And then you can see I've got a group here for the tentacle. I grouped the tentacle. Um, so I can easily now get to that and I can use the, cur the cursors like this to move it around uh, and hold the shift key will do bigger I increments as well as just moving it by uh, hand. I tend to not have snap on, um, uh, snap on guides, uh, it's just the way I work but if I was doing artwork that uh, needed absolute precision I definitely would do. So, so these little, going back to our suckers here, so the suckers are really simple. Uh, they're just <laughs> just two circles uh, squashed, and if you offset the circle uh, like that, um, there you go. You can see you've made a, a sucker, and then I just pop it in, and yeah. But you can see if, if I take that, cut that, and then get onto this group. Uh, and I just turn that. Off. There, we go. there you go it's in the group you can see that it automatically gets the the outline treatment there we go so well we've made a right old mess there but that is basically how we make the horror in the library logo uh, thanks a lot for watching I'm going to do another video uh, next about uh, how I do this funky gold text which should be really quick because I think you've probably worked out how, how I do it um, but we'll see all right so the next time bye for now